Hi, and welcome to Wireless Lighting Control with the Arduino in Vixen, part two. I'm your host, Akiba from Freak Labs, and I'll be taking you through the second part of this tutorial. We'll be taking what we learned in part one and extending it to wireless. This means that we'll be breaking up the system we had in the first part and turning it into a transmitter and a receiver section. It will also take some extra code, but it shouldn't be too painful. At the end of it all, I'm hoping it demystifies wireless lighting control and shows that pretty much anyone can do it. In this second part, you can see that I moved away from using the fretboard, which was the integrated Freakduino plus breadboard, and implemented the same circuit using a discrete breadboard plus a Freakduino. In this case, I'm using the 900 MHz long range version of the Freakduino, which is ideal for going through places with a lot of thick walls or where you need a lot of range. You might not need it, and a standard 900 MHz version would also work in many cases. I prefer using the 900 MHz license free band whenever I can since the range is much better than 2.4 GHz and it's less crowded due to the lack of Wi-Fi and other devices that use that band. We're going to go straight into the transmitter code, which is almost the same as our original code from part one. The main difference is that we'll be using the Chibi Arduino stack to send the data wirelessly rather than acting on it locally. Chibi Arduino is a wireless protocol stack that I wrote based on the open IEEE 802.15.4 standard. I simplified a lot of the configuration and features of that standard so that you basically just need to initialize it and then send and receive data. I realized a while back that most people don't care what standard they use and just want to send and receive wireless data. For the code, there are a few changes we need to make, like defining our source and destination addresses. That is, our own address and the address we want to send the data to. We'll also need to initialize the Chibi Arduino stack. We'll still be using the state machine to decode the serial protocol from Vixen, but rather than taking the data and converting that into lighting control signals, we're going to transmit the complete packet wirelessly. Most of the loop code should be familiar to you if you've watched the first part of this tutorial. The main difference is in the final state where instead of acting on the decoder data and flashing our LEDs, we're going to take the complete data array and send it wirelessly to our remote receiver. The three main changes we've made to the code are adding the chibi init function, chibi set short address function, and to transmit the data using the chibi tx function. The chibi init function is used to initialize the stack to its default states. In its default, it should already be able to send and receive data. Next, we set the short address. We actually only need to set this once and it gets stored in non-volatile memory. Our short address is the address other devices can send to when they want to talk to us. Finally, when our data is ready to be sent, we call the chibi-tx function to send it. It takes three arguments, the destination address, the data in byte array form, and the length of data that will be sent. That's it for our wireless transmitter. Now we're going to go to the receiver side where we get the data wirelessly and act on it by blinking the LEDs. Again, we start off by setting our defines, including our source and destination addresses. In this case, the addresses are reversed. Since we're on the receiver side, our source address is the transmitter's destination address and vice versa. We then initialize the pins and chibi stack in the setup function. And this time, we have a bit of luxury because our serial port is free. This means we can also print out debug messages to the serial port. Be careful about this though, since printing messages takes a lot of time. If you print too much under heavy traffic, you could overflow your receive buffer. In the loop function, we have a bit of new code. I'm going to start by writing out the basic code to receive data via the chibi Arduino stack. In the loop function, we check if data was received from the stack. If it was, then we call the chibi get data function and pass in a byte array. It'll fill in the array with the received data and return the length of data that was received. If the length is zero, that means it's a duplicate packet or one that we've already received before, so we just discard it. Finally, we go through the received data byte by byte and switch the corresponding LED based on if it's zero or 255. I wanted to pause here to show the bare bones receiver code first. Now I'm going to add a bit of extra data for the development side of things that we can get from the Chibi Arduino stack. It's not necessary, but could help debug issues we might have. We can print out the source address the data comes from as well as the RSSI or receive signal strength indicator. The higher the value, the stronger the signal strength. This can be used to debug situations where the signal strength is too weak for the receiver. Also, remember that it's best to keep the print statements to a minimum and ideally only for development purposes. Otherwise, they can slow your whole system down and cause you to drop packets due to the buffer filling up. Now it's time to go to the Vixen sequencer. 
We'll start by going into the display setup and configuring our serial port. The parameters are standard 57600 BPS, 8 bits, no parity, and one stop bit. After that, we start the data stream. This was also covered in more depth in part 1. Once that's all configured, it's time to go to the sequencer view. We're just going to reuse the same sequence we made in part 1, only this time the data will be sent wirelessly. Here we go. Now that we've proven we can wirelessly control LEDs, what about controlling some more substantial lighting? In this next part, I'm going to control LED tape using the same setup we just made. In this case, I'm going to use FET transistors, or field effect transistors, to switch the tape on and off. They function similarly to electrically controlled light switches, where if the LED pin is high, current is allowed to flow through the tape, and if it's low, current is cut off. Here's the connection diagram for this setup. It's repeated six times one for each channel. In this configuration, I'm using an N-channel MOSFET. Don't worry if you don't understand, there are plenty of tutorials on the internet about using MOSFETs to control high current devices. And if there's enough interest, I might do a video tutorial on it as well. In this case, I'm just using short strips of LED tape, but these tiny FETs can individually drive up to a 5 meter reel of LED tape. Let's see them in action. Okay, let's try separating the receiver and transmitter by a fair distance by putting the receiver outside. The Freakduino 900MHz long range boards are actually designed to transmit over large distances, so this should still be no problem. So we've covered a basic case of controlling LEDs using Vixen, and then extended that to wirelessly controlling those same LEDs. Finally, we use some interface electronics to control proper lighting. Those are the basic principles for wireless lighting control. Once you understand that, you can control just about any piece of lighting wirelessly. Here are some examples of how I use these principles in some collaborative projects with performing artists.
So that concludes this tutorial on wireless lighting control using Arduino and Vixen. If you enjoyed it, please consider checking out my shop at www.freaklabstore.com. All the hardware you see in these tutorials are available there, and it helps me put out more interesting designs and tutorials. Thanks for watching, and go control some lights!